Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about how to calculate the viscosity of a liquid. The viscosity is a term that describes how, well, <laughs> viscous a liquid is. For example, honey is much more viscous than water, if you know what I mean. It flows a lot more slowly. This is the formula that we're going to be using today. It is eta, which is a Greek letter, equals 2 times the density of the ball, rho, minus the density of the liquid, which is also rho, times the gravitational acceleration, times the radius to the power of 2, and all this divided by 9 times the velocity. The rho describes the densities. The rho of the ball, obviously, the density of the ball, and the rho liquid, obviously, the density of the liquid. The density is calculated by dividing the mass of an object by its volume. Using that logic, we can calculate the density of both the ball and the liquid. The ball, in our scenario, weighs 30 grams or 0.03 kilograms. We're gonna divide that by 0.000001 cubic meters and get a density of 30,000 kilograms per cubic meter. We'll do the same with the liquid. In our case, the liquid has a mass of 0.2 kilograms and we'll divide it by its volume of 0.0001 cubic meters, which takes us to the density of 2000 kilograms per cubic meter. For reference, water has 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. Second, there's the gravitational acceleration, which is represented by G. This is basically 9.81 since we're on Earth. It is the acceleration coefficient you might see in an accelerated movement. For example, if a skydiver jumps out of a plane, he will accelerate and soon reach terminal velocity. I'll leave the link to the video in the description. Then there's the radius of the ball to the power of 2. In our case, our ball that we dropped into the liquid has a radius of 0.001772 meters. And last but not least, there's the measured velocity. This time we're going to actually measure the velocity. We're gonna take a regular cylinder and we'll put our object in there and start measuring once the ball has gained a little speed because we don't want to use the very slow speed at the beginning. We want it to have it accelerated already a bit. That's why here you see these little gray stripes. They represent in between the space that we're going to measure. In our case, velocity is calculated by dividing the distance the object has traveled by its time. In our case, the cylinder was 30 centimeters tall or 0.3 meters and the ball took 5 seconds to drop, which leaves us with, with an average velocity of 0.06 meters per second. Obviously, what we want to find, find out is the eta, which represents the viscosity of the liquid. And now we can insert these values that we have just calculated into the formula. I'd recommend that you take a look at this formula and compare it with the original one we saw at the beginning. We inserted the density of the ball, which is 30,000, minus the density of the liquid, which is 2,000, and multiplied it with both two and the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81, times the radius of our sphere, 0.001772 meters to the power of 2. And all that we divided by 9 times the velocity, which is 0.06. And according to this formula, our viscosity is around 3.1944 pascal seconds. Pascal seconds is a unit of viscosity. There's also poise and millipascal seconds, but in our case, it's pascal seconds. 3.1944 is a little more viscous than honey as a reference. And that's it for the video. If you like the channel and want to see more every Saturday, then feel free to subscribe. You can always change your mind and it's totally free.